I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I got the question, why are there so few pleasure craft out on the beautiful lakes here in Nicaragua? And I think that's a great question and one worth really delving into because the reasons behind it will be both interesting and important for people who are coming to Nicaragua. If you're looking at living here or vacationing here, it will explain what you can look to find, what might be there, and what you're going to actually be interested in. And we're all going to talk about that with this beautiful beautiful cashew tree behind me that is just starting to bear fruit. We'll get to that right after the bump. It's late February here. That means it is the mid to late part of summer in Nicaragua. And that means the mangoes and the cashews are starting to bear fruit. We're getting mangoes falling off the trees here and there, and the cashews are just starting to form. You may not realize this, but Nicaragua is a major producer of cashews. We have them absolutely everywhere. And cashews produce the delicious nuts that you're used to eating, but they also produce cashew apples, which are a fruit you can use for a lot of things, but it's a very delicate fruit. So if you were to pick it and pack it, it generally has to be consumed the same day. It's not going to last more than about 48 hours and it doesn't transit well if you bump it around. It bruises way too easily so it's generally only used fresh not sold in stores. So just very interesting. This is what a cashew tree looks like. We have several of them. They are very large. They provide a lot of cover but they're very low to the ground and you don't really necessarily want to have them. If you have them in the right spots they're fantastic but cashews are highly toxic to your hands so you generally don't want to be touching them and they drop cashews everywhere. It takes a bit of work to actually turn them into something you're going to eat once you kind of eat the cashew apples. But let's get to today's question. A lot of wind just picked up while I was recording, which is perfect to segue into. One of the problems here in Nicaragua is that there is a lot of wind most of the time. And even when there isn't a lot of wind right at this moment, there could be any moment. And you can hear it in the trees above me. I do a lot to cut out the sound of the wind here, but there is a lot of wind going on. I'm hoping that by being by this wall that we can minimize the wind sound at least a little bit because it's just... It's crazy, but this is what every day is like here. It makes it very hard for recording outside during this time of the year. So this highlights the point that if you're going to try to navigate some waters in Nicaragua, you're possibly going to face a lot of wind just in general. Here in Central America, we don't have a lot of land mass to block the winds rushing from one ocean to another. And so they tend to come across the entire country with a lot of force. And this is just something you have to be aware of. It's not a problem day to day. It causes problems for microphones on my camera of course but it helps to keep you cool on a warm day it's actually absolutely beautiful right now i don't need i don't need the wind at all i could be out in the sun and be perfectly comfortable it's a great day but if you're going to go out on the lake any wind like this is going to make rough waves and possibly cap size a small craft so it's just something you have to be aware of so that kind of thing just discourages people going out in pleasure crafts in general the idea of pleasure crafts on lakes is something that is kind of unique to the united states in general Throughout the world, you don't find a ton of this. It exists for sure, but the idea that a lake inside of a, uh, a country that's landlocked, obviously la most lakes are landlocked, um, is going to be full of pleasure crafts is definitely not the norm on the world stage. If you go to most countries, to most lakes, you're going to find there aren't that many boats on them. And growing up in New York, actually we had very few. The Great Lakes are not good for pleasure crafts at all. Of course, there's some, but the rough waters, the deep lake, the navigation challenges just make it not a place that you're likely to do that. And if you go to the Finger Lakes, which is the lakes I grew up even closer to, they in the smaller lakes will have quite a few pleasure craft, but in the larger ones have very few because again, they are super deep, very cold and tend to turn this way and suck people down. Even if you're wearing a life vest, you can be sucked right down into them. Lakes, especially cold lakes, are harder to swim in than the ocean because you don't have the saline to keep you buoyant. And so it's something to be aware of. In much of the southern United States, lakes tend to be very shallow and relatively warm. And so when you think of those lakes, you immediately say, wow, I just want to put a boat on that. I want to go out and have some beers and hang out with the family, maybe go skiing. There's all these things you can do. And those make sense in the southern United States or the Midwest, much of the western United States. But the northeast, where you have a lot of glacial lakes, or really deep lakes, really large lakes, like the Great Lakes, those activities don't tend to make sense. So it becomes a rarity to find pleasure craft on those lakes rather than 
common. And so that's an important mindset to understand that most of the world is not going to jump to the idea of putting pleasure crafts out on water by default. That's just not a normal thing. It's, it's very actually unique to the US and Canada to have a large number of very warm, shallow, safe, easy to navigate lakes. A lot of the world just doesn't have that, or when they do have it, it's kind of the exception. The US is really uh, blessed with a large number of lakes that are perfect for that kind of activity. So even having lived in Greece, uh, having lived in Italy, when we would go down to the water, the number of boats that were out in the water was very few. Even though beautiful areas that people are in on the beaches all the time, in the water all the time, the number of people sailing, very few. Basically what I've found in my own just wanderings of the world is that if a body of water is large enough or 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 difficult enough to warrant having ferries on it then it probably doesn't have pleasure craft if it has pleasure craft it probably won't have ferries obvious exception to that our swimming pool in panama was so large that it did have a ferry on it but just to take people from one part of the swimming pool to another but that was obviously but there was no pleasure craft there was just that ferry otherwise it was just people swimming now that we have a little bit of global context, let's talk about the Nicaraguan context specifically. Let's go back to the conquistadors and the early Spanish colonies here. During that time, and all the way up to nearly the present, up until the late 1800s, most bodies of water in Nicaragua represented a very clear and present danger for one reason that people almost never realized. But this is important when you're gonna be visiting Nicaragua, this is something you should always be thinking about because it explains so much of what you're gonna see, so much of the culture, so much of the layout, of cities so many things around one basic concept pirates Nicaragua was a country absolutely ravaged by pilot pirates pirates came up the Pacific coast they came up the Atlantic coast but importantly they also came up the rivers and went through the lakes and so everywhere you went in the country that had a body of water that was large enough to be navigable you had pirates with cannons and that meant that building anything near the water anywhere in the country was risky because a pirate could just come up and open fire on you if you didn't bring him all of your money and so that was a real problem and so many things in nicaragua when you're like why is this church this far from the waterfront oh because that was just outside of cannonball range why did no one build here oh because there was pirates and so the idea that you would gather by the water for anything but fishing was just not accepted that was very risky on a population scale you could do it from time to time but if you were to put boats out in the water they could be ruined they could be stolen there was just a lot of problems so traditionally for that reason even as settlements nicaraguans did not go that near to the water prior to the conquistadors perhaps there was more uh usage of the waterfronts when there weren't pirates out there uh but still there were other challenges right early civilizations did not spend a lot of time out on lakes having pleasure crafts for just having fun on you know navigable water navigable waterways it's not really a thing until the recent era both historically and during the time of pirates and importantly since the time of the pirates another factor has been really significant in keeping many Nicaraguans from getting into the water and there's more than one specific factor causing this but one general factor for both the Pacific waterfront and the Lago Nicaragua waterfront and that is danger on the Pacific side, nearly all of Nicaragua is cursed with really strong riptides and strong surf. It's great for surfers. It makes for beautiful water to sit out on. We love going to the beach here, partially because of the strong waves and the powerful Pacific, which is anything but pacifist as its name implies uh, but that means that the waterfront there is extremely dangerous for swimming and you have to be a powerful trained swimmer to safely be able to go out in the water and even then you need people watching you you need to not be alone the pacific is unforgiving and all the time costa rica and nicaragua are losing people out there because they don't understand how dangerous it is they think well i've seen you know the ocean in movies, it looks great. I see other people go out in the water, I must be able to. And every year we're losing several people because they just, they venture out too far, they don't appreciate the power and the force of the ocean and they make a mistake and there's no way to rescue them. That is incredibly tragic and it is a constant thing. So Nicaraguans traditionally did not go to the ocean because you had to be such a good swimmer and there was no rescue equipment until recently. So there was, it was, it was just very dangerous. And likewise, in Lago Nicaragua, while it isn't as buoyant, so you have to be a little bit stronger swimmer, and there's still waves, but there's not the big surf, 
But there's another factor that very few people realize, and that is bull sharks. It is actually a thing that is not a rumor. Lago Nicaragua used to be full of bull sharks and other things you don't like, such as uh, sawfish. So there's a lot of danger from the things living in Lago Nicaragua in addition to any weather and, and difficulty in swimming. And even though it's a shallow lake and in many cases it would be pretty pretty swimmable and pretty good for small craft to go out in, uh, those things posed traditionally so much of a danger that it didn't become a cultural thing for Nicaraguans to go into the water. These factors combined with the general poverty in the country have led to a very general factor that then exacerbates all this, which is very few Nicaraguans know how to swim. Not knowing how to swim may sound like, ah, but you're on a boat, but you're on a, but people who don't know how to swim very rarely are going to seek out getting on a boat or doing any activity out on water. They'll go to the beach, they'll watch from a distance, they'll live very close to it, they'll go fishing, but actually going out in the water for fun doesn't happen because when you can't swim, it's not fun. That's scary all the time. Even if you have a life vest on, even if you, you know, feel like you're in a very secure situation, you're always in a position of knowing that if anything happens, you are trapped. And so that is not something that people who can't swim are going to do naturally. So by the time you take that the population centers are away from the water, that traditionally people don't go into the water, that generally people don't know how to swim, and even if you know how to swim, a lot of your friends don't, so taking everyone out on a boat is not something someone would want to do. And then compound with that the fact that any kind of boating activity generally denotes a large amount of affluence, even in the United States, in order to have a boat that is a very expensive thing, or a boat that's very nice at all. That's a lot of money and a huge financial commitment. Not very many people either can do it or want to be able to putting their financial resources into something that loses value so quickly and consumes so much time and effort and cost. So even if all those stars align and you find people who know how to swim and all their friends know how to swim and they even could afford it and they can get past and they just want to do things like Americans and they don't care about the dangers and the bull sharks aren't a real concern anymore. They do exist, but they're, they're hunted to the point of it's just super rare. So it's not something to actually worry about. The lake is so big, like that there's one or two bull sharks out there is not a, is not an actual risk. Um, and by the time you do all that, convincing someone that they want to throw that time and money at doing an activity that no one thinks about, that no one think sounds like a fun thing, it's just not very likely to happen. Now, all that said, can you put a pleasure boat in the ocean or on the lakes? Absolutely. All that said, can you find that there are some pleasure craft out there today? Yes, there absolutely are. They are few and far between, but they do exist. And a perfect example is the country actually operates one that goes out of the port of Salvador Allende, and it actually goes to a small island that is full of rides and attractions for families. And it is something that you just do in conjunction with the Malecon and, and uh, family uh, amusement park that is there by the waterfront in Managua. But unfortunately, Lago Managua, formerly known as Lago Leon, is highly polluted. And this is just a sad fact and nothing we can hide and nothing we can easily fix. So unfortunately, while efforts are ongoing to try to clean up the lake, it is going to be a very long process. The lake is one of the most polluted in Central America, one of the more polluted in Latin America, and it is not a place you're gonna fish. It is not a place you're going to swim. Some people do, don't do that. It really is polluted. Lago Nicaragua, the big one, go right ahead. It's reasonably good, right? I don't know why you would want to. It's cold. It's it's just not that interesting from a swimming perspective. But if you want to get in at La Verjan or at San Jorge or even in Granada, you absolutely can. And that's not a problem. But if you're going to go in Managua, you want to stay near the water. It doesn't smell. It looks fine. But you don't want to be eating anything that's coming out of it. You really don't want to be climbing into it yourself. So just it's unfortunate. And hopefully we see that get fixed over time. And some people at Puerto Mombotumbo actually do go in uh, because there's a beach there and it's just very inviting and Maybe the pollution isn't as bad on that side of the lake. It's very far away from the city, but definitely near the city you want to stay out of the water. But definitely go to the waterfront. It's beautiful, and, and hopefully in time we can get it cleaned up uh, and, and make it a place where people really do want to go swimming and do want to take boats out. Um, but also it's worth noting there are very few beaches 
on uh, Lago Managua. So the idea that you're just going to have a place to launch your boat, not very common. So that's another challenge is that on the lake, even though it's polluted, so you wouldn't do it now, but if you had it all cleaned up, I'm sure things would change. But the ports are the ports of Managua, and that's very much a, a rock seawall. It'd be very difficult to have boats there. And it's not something the city is equipped for. So that'd be a little bit of a challenge. I'm sure it would change, but it would have some physical challenge to finding a marina and a place to put in boats. When you go around the lake, a lot of the lake is, is mountains and volcanoes coming right down to the water. So it's not places where you would have access. The access to the Northwest is the Porto Mumbo Tumbo by Leon Viejo. Up in the Northwest is the Porto Mumbo Tumbo located right beside Leon Viejo, the, the museum and archeological site, there is a small port there. And that is the most likely place that you would go and put in a boat, but there's no marina there. And it is simply a small sandy access. There is another port near uh, Puente Huete, uh, which has, I'm sorry, Punto Huete, uh, which has the new airport in the Northeast. Uh, and there in theory, boats can go in as well, but you're talking very small areas. There's just not very many good accessible spots to put boats in. Again, they would find ways to do it if it was something that people wanted. Uh, but the current, it's like everything just comes together. And all of the access to the lake, is, except for in Managua itself in the city proper, is extremely remote. And that makes it very difficult for people to want to go because they would have to get a boat, take it a really long distance and put it in. It just would be way too much effort for people. It'd be hours and hours of logistics for putting in a boat. Whereas in the United States, often you can get to a body of water that you want to put a boat on much more easily. Now, where there is a change to all this, and this is important to, to note, right? If given an opportunity, will people use pleasure craft? The answer is yes, right? So some places that you're going to go, like Laguna de Apoyo, you're going to see that. And you're going to say, there's zero boats. This is so beautiful. Why are there no boats? It's because they're strictly outlawed, because you're not allowed to have a motor anywhere near Laguna de Apoyo, because it is a nature preserve, a very strict nature preserve, because it is water that is thousands of years old. There's no way to change it out. Uh, it's, it's very protected. So that, that's why there. Uh, if you go up to Lago Apanas, up in the mountains, just kind of northwest, I'm sorry, northeast of Hinotega, what you find is a shallow reservoir. It is man-made, so there is no need to protect it as a special nature preserve. It is uh, completely isolated from the oceans because it's man-made, so it has no bull sharks or other dangerous fish in it. It is really shallow and calm. It is up in the mountains, so it just has. It doesn't have that uh, hot, near the ocean, very wave-generating kind of climate. So it tends to be very relaxed. Plus, being very shallow reduces the number of waves significantly, and so that combination of things uh, makes it it very approachable, and both figuratively in the sense that it's just very easy to go and use the lake for activities, but also from a physical standpoint, because it is a reservoir built in a flat valley, uh, it actually has a very, very long, slow physical approach to it, so it's easy to drive up to it, it's easy to put boats in, and up on Lago Apanas, there are absolutely pleasure crafts on the boat and people who take their boats up there for the weekend and put them in and go do things on the lake. So there, where it's just a reservoir and it makes sense and it's safe and and it all and it's very clean then yeah people do actually go use it uh, but that is a new thing that is happening partially because the reservoir is new itself so people are just kind of getting that mindset going but also people haven't had boats traditionally so those are things that have to be acquired over time the idea that you're going to go boating is a new thing that you have to acquire the culture for that that happens pretty rapidly but that has to be acquired finding people who want to do it getting people to learn how to swim all those things build over time the mountains have a tendency to be kind of progressive in those sort of things compared to the rest of the country so that they're starting to do it up there and, and starting to utilize up on us a little bit it's not surprising at all and if that's something you're really interested in you want to you know go skiing on the weekends with your family then absolutely i don't know where you're going to get the boat and skis but you're allowed to have them and you're allowed to take them up on up on us and up on us would be a beautiful place to do that and relatively safe and accessible and affordable and and very easy for that so yes you can do that here and a few locals do could you do it on lago nicaragua yes but beware huge lake 
no obvious marinas, uh, a lot of very big waves, and maybe a bull shark or two. But if I was to live closer to Lago Nicaragua, I would want to have a boat on it myself uh, and at least use it so I don't have to take the ferry to go places and I can zip around to different locations on the lake by boat. That's not something you absolutely can do, just it doesn't make financial or cultural or historic sense for most Nicaraguans. So you're not going to find people who are interested in that. You're not going to find people who are wondering how they can do it and are feeling like they're missing out on something. Not at all. What's really happening is that people have no interest in anything of the sort, but if you want to do it, well, there's no reason why you couldn't. Of course you can. Now, Lago Managua, you would not want to do it there. And really, we have a few of these really large lakes, but we don't have very many smaller lakes. There's little tiny things here and there. Most of them are uh, volcanic. Those you're not going to be allowed to do anything on because they are protected volcano zones. Maybe not protected in the way that a Poyo is, but protected in one way or another. Uh, so it, it really is isolated to just about three lakes that you could consider. And of course, if all you want to do is go out on Lago Managua and take a, you know, a pontoon boat out and have some beers and hang out on the boat. You absolutely can. And you can even use the lake as a way to get between the Leon zone and the Managua zone and the new airport. You can certainly do that. And there are ferry services that exist up on the lake for that. Uh, but you don't want to do any activity that involves getting into the water. And most people, most of the time, when you're talking about pleasure crafts and water sports, you're wanting at least someone to ski, someone to swim, something. And and that's, if you don't have that, you really have to gauge, do you just really want to own a boat and zip around to different places? Do you really want a boat on a lake where you don't want to get wet? I mean, not that it's the end of the world if you do get, you know, into the lake at all. You just need to shower and clean off. It's not like there's sharks that are going to pull you in and that's the end of you. It's just, it's really dirty. Uh, so it, the water's gross and you don't want to be drinking it. You don't want to be eating it. And you don't want to be eating fish out of it, if any fish even still exist in it. Uh, so you know, gauge what you want. Uh, but absolutely, you have the opportunity to do that stuff. And then likewise on the ocean, can you have pleasure craft on the ocean? Yes, you can, but there aren't very many places where you can bring a boat in. So that's a really big challenge. The coast is very rocky and very rough. So uh, San Juan del Sur is popular for that reason. If you look at pictures of San Juan del Sur during the day, typically you're gonna see its bay just full of boats. It's because it's one of the few places that you can anchor them. If you go out into the ocean, it's too rough. If you try to go to any other beach, there's no place to safely put them. So San Juan del Sur really stands out as a place where people do that. There's a marina up in Chinandega as well, but it's very expensive. It's meant for yachts that are coming down from El Salvador. There is a bay out in uh, near um, uh, Bluefields that you could go to. There are places, but they're very far away from where you're likely to want to live. Uh, and then you're looking at uh, open ocean situations, which could be great for you, but a lot, for a lot of people, that's very tough. The only boats that go with any regularity out of those beaches are the fishing boats. There's their launches and they are not fun at all. They're designed simply to get over the sandy banks, get out into the open ocean, take them out far enough to be able to do the fishing and get back. They, they're not comfortable in any way. They are not meant to look cool, feel cool, be fun places to hang out and drink, purely work crafts. Uh, and that's really all there is. So in general, I would say take a cue from the Nicaraguans. They would use the lakes and they would enjoy them if they felt that they made sense. But also be aware that as an American or Canadian, you're likely bringing a love of lake uh, activities, of riparian uh, pastimes that simply are not culturally a thing here in Nicaragua. And likely you and all of your expats friends know how to swim very well. Uh, and so your situation could be incredibly different than a Nicaraguan's. So balance those two things. In general, it's not as nice to go boating here as you would do in the United States, but you may have factors that make it very nice for you. And of course, if you enjoy lakes with very few people on them, then you're going to find that Nicaragua is perfect, that you may have the lake very much to yourself. Thanks for joining me on a windy afternoon. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. We make very little making these shows here on YouTube, and your donations make all the difference in being able to get new equipment and cover all of our costs and time that goes into making this show. And we do have a new 3D camera that did arrive with my father. I'll be picking it up shortly. I have a new 50 millimeter lens for nighttime concert photography that should be arriving any day. Uh, your donations make these things possible. Uh, if you would be so kind as to like, subscribe, share on social media, tell your friends about the show. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.
And to support the show even more, just take this moment and one of these four videos that has popped up on the screen, go ahead and click on that and, and watch another show. Thanks.